Mr. Snow. After everything you've seen out there in the world. What are the Hunger Games for? Are you, are you coming to the truth? I have the pleasure of getting to sit here with Mr. Francis Lawrence, the director of Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. First off of seeing it, I would love to just kind of get your thoughts after experiencing it in T4, uh, in our theater here at IMAX HQ. Uh, yeah, it uh, was a fantastic experience watching it um, and sort of approving the final IMAX version about Song Birds and Snakes. It's uh, it's actually, you know, most of my movies I finish an IMAX version and it's probably one of my favorite times to, to watch the film because, you know, I've spent, you know, years making it and sort of living in it and building it and editing it and I've seen the movie over and over and over, but when it comes time to sit in the IMAX theater and you know, really be truly immersed in it. It's it's always one of my favorite moments in, in the making of a film. Fans of both the Hunger Games franchise and maybe even new fans to the franchise, why should they experience this film in IMAX? Well, I think, you know, the, the large format, which I'm such a huge fan of, is just the most immersive way of seeing really any kind of movie, but specifically Hunger Games, you know, for me. Um, but what I would also say is, sure, it makes it more immersive when you're in the arena or when you're in certain sequences and certain environments and things like that. But what I really love is also just the detail that you get to see and that you get to pick up when you're seeing it in such a large format. And not just the sort of the detail of the environments, but also the detail and the subtleties of performance. You know, we have fantastic actors in this. And, you know, it's just kind of shame when you hear people are like looking at these things on their phones or iPads or computers and things like that, when you can see it in an environment like this and see their faces, you know, that large and really get every little nuance of the performance, I think it's just fantastic. Well, it goes to like the intentionality behind it, right? Like yes. that's, these things are meant to be experienced in a communal way with fans that are really feeding off of that energy. Exactly. And I think you feel that. I do want to kind of dive into uh, maybe a little bit of the legacy of the expanded aspect ratio that you've worked with, calling back to, and we pulled, we looked at Reddit, we looked, we've seen this a lot of places, but there's a moment in Catching Fire. The elevator. The elevator, yeah. So you have heard this? Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, was, I was, it's one that people are in love with to this day. What went behind that decision? The first movie that I did an IMAX version of was I Am Legend. And so we did an IMAX print of that um, and an IMAX version of it, but what it, it remained in a 2-4 aspect ratio. So when it came time for Catching Fire and we started talking about doing you know the games or at least the majority of the games in large format, we started talking about, you know, using the IMAX cameras and filming certain portions in IMAX and certain portions just spherically that we would blow up, picking and choosing how and where we would do it. And, and also it was, you know, it was kind of a relatively new thing that I think Chris Nolan, you know, really started to do with his uh, Batman series with the sort of format opening up. And I didn't really want it to be random and I wanted it to have an emotional impact. And so instead of finding things before the games or even moments after the games, it felt like the games were the spot for us to open up. And then honestly, it was a very organic, um, you know, sort of development of how it was going to open up because from the book, there's a moment where she's, you know, down and she witnesses the sort of, you know, the beating of, of Cinna and then the elevator starts to go up and that's the beginning of the games. And it was kind of this perfect transition from our 240 aspect ratio up to the you know full IMAX. And because she's rising, you could have the whole thing opening up. So as it's getting brighter and she's coming out into the games and into the jungle, the, the whole thing opens up and you just feel this whole new sort of experience kind of right along with with Katniss. So, you know, moving then along into, you know, this movie, it was really trying to find the, the moments in the movie and the environments in the movie that are sort of deserving of the the aspect ratio change. Um, and there, I will say there are moments where the aspect ratio opens up more slowly as opposed to just cutting to the larger aspect ratio as the characters are sort of experiencing environments uh, for, for the first time. I do want to ask, 
in terms of the expanded aspect ratio, just roughly about how much film duration is opened up into that aspect ratio. I think we have just over an hour of um, our movie is is you know full IMAX aspect ratio, uh, which is you know which is a fair amount. I think when Catching Fire had in the end, I think it was maybe thirty minutes or something. So this has more um, of the IMAX aspect ratio than than even Catching Fire had. Wow. Okay, that's exciting. Yeah, <laughs> that's really exciting. Um, I want to kind of pivot a little bit to a little bit more of your process, and in particular, you know, you've brought a lot of big IP to the screen. What's kind of your process? Because I feel like with fan bases and especially with popular IP, there's a lot of you know things that you feel like you need to bring into it, or or you know, doing honor to the source material. Could you talk about your thought process when it comes to bringing to life kind of beloved IP? I mean, I, honestly, I think it just has to, it has to start with me being a fan too, because I feel like if I feel like I'm part of that community, then I'm just going to be doing it a service by being a fan um, originally, as opposed to feeling like I'm servicing fans. Um, you know, I love this franchise. I didn't do the first film, but I came on in the second one. And I had my way of making the movies and it's different from the, the way the first film was made. But I think that I loved what the stories were about and I loved the spirit and I loved the characters um, and I loved the themes. And so I think that I was attracted to the same elements of these stories that the fans were. And so I was just kind of naturally going to be sort of serving the fans. Yeah, well, I think from one fan to another, like it comes across, you know, like you can really feel when there's a fan behind it, yeah. because exactly like you're saying, like it's not hard for you to find those moments because you are in those moments with the rest of the fandom. Yeah, and I, I mean, I, I think one of the fun things about this movie is that, you know, being, you know, eight, about eight years or so later from, you know, when The Last Mockingjay came out, you know, had enough time to sort of cleanse my palate for a minute get away from the franchise for a minute because I spent about four or five years of my life on it and, you know, kind of recharge. And then when it came back, I think, again, it's fun for me to go back in the world and revisit some of the, the characters, the world itself, the themes, things like that. But also I have the same nostalgia for the franchise that the fans do. So when there's opportunities to sort of hit those little kind of emotional sort of touch points with the story, um, that's just as exciting for me as it is, I think, or as I think it will be for the fans when they see the film. Oh, that's so cool. No, I, I that's so awesome. I, um, I want to kind of dive into what you were just talking about because that's something that, you know, we've read from past interviews with you is that you would be interested in diving into more aspects of the world of Pan Am. Mm -hmm. Are there any stories of, you know, individuals that haven't been explored or institutions that haven't been explored or maybe not in depth that interests you as something that you would be wanting to do at some point? I don't know, you know, it's, it's, I got asked a lot at the end of the Mockingjay movies if I would do another one. And, and for me, it was always whether or not Suzanne Collins wrote another story. You know, she always starts with a, a th thematic idea. So the stories always have a very strong thematic foundation. Um, they're not sort of telling stories for the sake of telling stories or, you know, having more in the Hunger Games world. There's really something relevant that she's writing about. And if she were to write another book, that'd be fantastic because I, I would know that there was going to be substance behind it and there's kind of a reason for it to exist um, and that I'm, I'm really into it. What's interesting is that when we finished the Mockingjay movies, people thought, you know, and asked us what we thought would be an interesting, you know, story to tell. And Nina Jacobson and I always said it would be around the dark days, the sort of origin of the, of the Hunger Games. That would be really interesting. I know a lot of fans wanted, you know, the Hamish games or the Finnick games and things like that. But for us, the origin of the games was something really interesting. And that basically ended up being what, you know, Suzanne wrote about. So, but for me, it, it all starts with Suzanne. She's got to, she's got to come up with the story and write the book. If you could go back and watch any movie again or for the first time in IMAX, if you could experience anything theoretical. Anything? I mean... Geez, I think it would probably be Apocalypse Now. Um, you know, one of my favorite experiences in, in movies was seeing Apocalypse Now. It was a 70 millimeter remastered print. Um, 
at the Cinerama Dome. And I feel like being able to see sort of, you know, a remastered version in IMAX would be really fantastic. That's a great, that's a really great pick. Yeah. That's amazing. Thank you so much for sitting down with us. We are so excited. I know everybody else is excited to see this movie too. And it's really such an honor. Great, thank you.